Okay, good morning class. I'll be uh, explaining to you about the properties of definite integrals. To start with, uh, we need to know what definite integrals are. So the basic application of definite integrals is when we deal with area of area under a function. Like you want to find the area from here to here. So that's when we use definite integrals. Uh, imagine here it's a point x is equal to a and here x is equal to b. We need to find the area of the graph and of the function under this from a to b. Like in such circumstances we use uh, definite integrals. So the first property we will be dealing with for definite integrals is the following. You can see integral of f of x, f of x dx from constants a to b is given by, I mean this is one of the properties. So yeah, a to b f of d dt. Here we can see that the variables are immaterial. That means they don't make any meaning in the property, uh, in the in the following thing. See, when we do uh, integral of x dx or any function from constant say 0 to 1, we get an answer that is uh, independent of the variable. We make it 0 to 1, that is 1 by 2. So there is no variable in the final answer. So if you take any other variable over here in place of x, if you take y or t or any other variable, we will get an we will get the same answer which is independent of the variable. So that's where the first property comes from. The second property states that a to b integral of f of x dx can be written as minus of b to a f of x dx. So you can integrate it, for example, if you want to integrate a function from x is equal to a to x is equal to b, we can use this formula f of x dx from a to b or the minus of b to a from there to here, minus of b to a, you will get the same answer. You can actually uh, cross check it with this same example if you want and you will see that the answer will come uh, the same, 1 by 2. The third, um, third property that integral of f of x dx from a to b can be written as a to c f of x dx plus c to a, I mean c to b f of x dx. So in this in this graph, if we have another constant here c, to find the area of this. Uh, this graph, I mean the area under this graph, we can integrate from A to C and to that we can add the portion C to B. So we will get the total final answer again. We have done the same application in the chapter, uh, application of integral, so uh, it can, this, this, is from, this is where it comes from, that property comes from here. So A to C plus C to B. And then the fourth, uh, fourth property is A to B f of x dx. This can be written as integral of f of sum of limits as a plus b, a plus b minus the variable involved, so x dx. f of x dx is equal to f of a plus b, that is this is the sum of limits minus x. The proof is quite simple for this. Proof. All we have to do is take the RHS. RHS is f of a plus b minus x dx. We can take a plus b minus x as t. T. So can somebody differentiate this for me? Anybody? Yes. Yes. A plus b minus x. I need to differentiate this. B zero. 0 plus 0 plus 0 minus d dx minus dx plus dt plus dt that is dx is minus dt so what we have to know when we change the uh, variable over here in such cases is that even the limits change here it is with respect to x so what we have to do when x changes from 0 i mean from a to b a to b t changes from Substitute x equals a over here. So you get a plus b minus a. That is b. 
you get B over here to substitute X as B you get A plus B minus B that is A so uh, just write that down there so it will become B to A F of D D T B to A F of yeah minus here is the minus sign so minus of F of T now you can use this formula property number 2 to change the minus sign and hence change the limits so it will become B to A B to A F of T D T but instead of T D T we can use property number 1 and write it as X we can change T into X so it will become F of X dx which is equal to the LHS LHS so this is the proof of the fourth property the fifth one is also quite similar it's just a special case that is when the lower limit is 0 and the upper limit is let's say a constant a so f of x dx you can use the same formula here so here b is 0 I mean b is b is a and a is 0 so just substitute it over there you will get f of a minus x dx from 0 to a the property is, I mean the proof is the same thing just uh, you can write a minus x as t and you get the same answer all over again so that is the fifth property okay, the next the sixth property is quite different from the other five we've done the sixth property is when you integrate a function from minus a to positive a f of x let's say we get there are two possible answers it can be zero when f of x is an odd function when f of x is odd and it is uh, 2 into 0 to a when f of x is even f of x is even yeah. so this is the sixth property we have now odd and even functions can be shown with the help of a graph even functions for example I'll start with even functions y is equal to x square this is an even function because when you draw the graph you substitute the x values you can substitute this is f of x let's say when you substitute when you make a function f of minus x you get the same answer that is y is equal to minus x the whole square which is equal to x square so even if you substitute minus x we get the same answer that is when we say a function is even or you can say that graphically speaking an even function is symmetric with respect to the y axis you can see here the y axis it is symmetric in both ways that is when it is an even function example is cos x y is equal to cos x is an even function because if you substitute x as minus x you get cos of minus x which is again the same thing y is equal to cos x that is an even function the graph goes the graph goes like this goes like this so this too is symmetric with respect to the y axis now odd functions are when the graph is when the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin not the y axis with respect to the origin for example this line y is equal to x this is an odd function you substitute let's say this is f of x f of x is equal to x f of minus x will be minus x which is minus of f of x this is the condition when f of x when f of minus x is equal to minus of f of x it is an odd function example again is uh, sin x y is equal to sin x graph goes like this so here you can see it is symmetric with respect to the origin and if you and if you write sin of minus x you get minus sin x so that is the difference between an odd and even function now how this property came and I'll show you it's actually quite easy to understand if you know how to do it by graphs so again let's go to the example y is equal to x square x square when you integrate it from minus a to positive a let's say a is equal to 2 just for simplicity a is equal to 2 so it will become minus a is equal to minus 2 
So here is minus 2 and there is plus 2. When you integrate, this is the origin, when you integrate it from here to here, we know it is symmetric with respect to the y axis. So it's as good as saying 2 into this much area. That will give you the area of the whole thing. So 2 into 0 to 2 f of I mean f of no, it's, uh, y is equal to x squared, x squared dx. So this will give the same thing as integrating from minus 2 to plus 2. That is why we use this property. And in case of odd, let's say y is equal to x cube. I will give a graph like this. Symmetric with respect to the origin. And if you again take minus 2, you come like this. So there is minus 2 plus 2. When you integrate this, you see here this part is above the x-axis and while this is below the x-axis. So when you integrate it, those both get cancelled and get 0. It's that, that's the whole thing. So x cubed dx if you are integrating it from minus minus 1 to plus 1 for the time being, I will get uh, x raised to 4 by 4 from minus 1 to plus 1. That will be 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4. That is 0. So in case of odd functions, we should know that the both the parts will get cancelled out and in even functions they add up. So that's the sixth property. Okay. Here's the seventh property. This is when the function is integrated from 0 to 2a f of x dx. We can write this as 0 to a f of x dx plus 0 to a f of 2a that is upper limit mi minus x 2a minus x f of 2a minus x dx this is the seventh property this can be proved when we take 2a minus x as t so when you differentiate you will get minus dx is equal to dt I'm substituting that value just in this I'm, I'm leaving this as it is and just over here so this you can write as and oh yeah, the limits x will change from 0 to a. So, anybody t from can anybody tell t changes from where to where? Anybody? Okay, 2 a to so when you write this, it will become just leaving this part, okay? So, it will become plus f of uh, f of t dt from. 2a to a. Now we can use this property, the first one, I mean the second one, and change the negative sign. So if you change the negative sign, we know that the limits will change. So it will become a to 2a. The eighth property is again the special case of this. Eighth one is just when, just take this this one part. When, I will show you, f of x dx from 0 to 2a is equal to we have two possibilities one is 2 into 0 to a f x dx when f of 2a minus x is equal to f of x and this is 0 when f of 2a minus x is equal to minus of f of x that is just substitute this over here and you will see that here there is already f of x and then if f of 2a minus x is also f of x then you will get 2 times this whole thing and if in case if it is negative then this gets cancelled with that and you get 0 example you can give uh, 0 to pi sin x dx George, can you tell me sin pi minus x sin of pi minus x sin of pi minus x is sin x that is sin of 2a minus x is sin x that is f of x so the answer will be we can write this as 0 to pi by 2 2 times sin x dx similarly if you want to prove the this part we can write cos x dx from pi 0 to pi and you will get will get the will get 0 so these are the eight properties that we will be using to solve the questions so that's it from me. Thank you guys for paying attention.